How's it going, guys? I hope you're having a great week so far. If you've watched Jason and Brooke's videos this week, you're going to know two things. First of all, that we're talking about faith. And secondly, you're going to know that this is our last week of our five for fives that we've been sharing with you guys for three years. It's been such an awesome connection point over the past years during the pandemic and all. I um, mean, we have enjoyed sharing just a little insight into our lives with you guys and some scripture into that as well. But starting Monday, Brooks is going to continue sharing what we're going to call Monday Focus going forward. So check that out on the um church YouTube channel. We've got hundreds of videos shared there for over the years as well. Um, I have my own YouTube channel as well, and you can find all my old five for fives. You can find most of our student teaching series there, um, as well as some exercise videos that I posted way back during the pandemic. And it is hilarious to look back and see how things have changed, right? As we talk about faith this week, I want to share where I got the name for my YouTube channel from. It's called Functional Faith. And guys, I use this term from several different aspects of my life. As you guys know, I've been a CrossFit certified trainer. Um, and the verbiage that we use in that community for ec- that kind of exercise is called functional fitness, right? It's not a specialized fitness where we only train in one discipline, like running or lifting or whatever. It's a cross-platform training that will prepare us to be functional in whatever exercise or whatever situation that life throws at us. And I've continued that style of training ever since then. And I love how my F3 community kind of follows that same methodology as well, right? There are F3 run groups and rut groups and various other things, but all of our core groups are boot camp style workout where it's a full body workout that includes strength and cardio components at the same time. And why is that important to cross train? Well, because you never know what life is gonna ask of you physically. Well, you guys are smart, right? And you're probably already jumping to the spiritual connection to that principle as well. We need to have a functional faith in this world to be ready for whatever it is that the world and its system is gonna throw at us as believers. Functional faith is something that is a big deal for me, right? I try to give our students application, um, even weekly challenges to be sure that we aren't just learning information about our faith, but we're actually learning how to be more like Jesus every time uh, we meet someone on the road, right? Then we have to put that into practice. Now, Brooks mentioned a passage in James 2 earlier this week, and I'm going to jump just a few verses ahead of him and share James 2, 14 through 17. And here we read, What good is it, my brothers, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can that faith save him? If a brother or a sister is poorly clothed and lacking in daily food, and one of you says to them, go in peace and be warmed and filled without giving them the things that they needed for the body, what good is that? So also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. Now, James points out how hypocritical and how unkind it would be to tell someone to go and be warmed with the Spirit when they are physically freezing due to a lack of clothing. He also says that telling someone to go and be filled with the Spirit when they haven't had a meal in two days is a horrible reflection of Jesus. Our faith can't just be slogans that we repeat or theology that we learn from books. Guys, it has to have practical application as well. Our faith, when kept to ourselves, isn't very effective. To be functional, we have to put it into practice of some sort. We don't know who or what situation the Holy Spirit is going to bring us uh, or bring across our, our paths tomorrow, guys. So we need to be ready to share our faith in a variety of different ways through our actions. And we must be careful to never be a Christian in title only and instead live that truth out in tangible ways for a lost world to see. When we live that kind of faith out, guys, people will believe our words and they're gonna find Jesus for themselves. So guys, my challenge in this last five for five is to make your faith functional. Don't store it up for yourself. Don't confine it to a single building or a single day on your calendar. Guys, let your faith spill over every single day in every situation to every person that you come across. That is what a Christian does, and that is what the world needs to see. Guys, have a great rest of your week. Check back on the church channel for the Monday Focus starting next week. And uh, you can check out my channel as well for more of our student series as they come out and possibly some new material from time to time along the way, kind of like our five for fives were too, guys. It's been an honor to share with you over um, each week over the past three years, and I want to thank God for this opportunity. It's been awesome. We will see you guys real soon.